Hello everyone, this is Yeshua said my name, YSMN. I'm going to be doing a recap for you, uh, slightly just in mention of the live chat that we had on Friday, which I enjoyed very much, and I thank all of those of you who are able to join in. Um, those of you who were not, uh, I'll give you a, a quick recap of what we discussed, and maybe when you have a chance you can um, uh, go back and review that video. I'm also going to be doing an ecumenical update uh, from Rome, uh, from a Vatican News website, and all these sources that I give you, I'll put links down in the description section for you so you can look them up yourself. Uh, so I'll be discussing two news stories regarding the Vatican and the papacy and ecumenism, as well as doing a slight quick recap of Friday night's live chat, uh, just to give you a little taste of what we discussed. Uh, hopefully, if you have time, uh, you can go back and watch the previous video. It was like an hour and a half long, but it was a great live chat. I hope to have uh, live chats regularly on Friday evenings. Um, there will be at least once during the week a live chat during the week during the daytime uh, because I, I ran a poll recently and some people were stating that some were uh, more available during the daytime more so in the evening between 4 and 8 p.m. Uh, 4 and 8 p.m. Uh, US Eastern Standard Time um, but some were available during daytime hours because of shift work so occasionally I will do a video or a live chat uh, for those who are home during the day and but our main live chats I'm shooting for will be Friday evenings so hopefully uh, keep that in the back of your mind Friday evening anywhere between 4 and 8 p.m. and I usually put up a uh, in community section I'll let you know when I'm going to be doing a live chat uh, but for those of you who missed uh, Friday evenings live chat uh, let me recap a little bit of what we discussed uh, we went into biblically uh, the UFO alien phenomena, fallen angels, and the Nephilim. Uh, interviews were given. Uh, videos were shown from uh, previous presidents, Ronald Reagan. Uh, there were uh, uh, military pilots that were interviewed on Tucker Carlson's show on Fox News, uh, citing how these vehicles and craft that were seen could not be explained by the laws of physics. Uh, so we, we discussed the Vatican Lucifer Telescope on Mount Graham. Uh, we discussed Tucker Carlson's interviews with uh, military pilots. Uh, I even showed videos of those. Uh, I showed three different videos that were compiled together quickly of what Ronald Reagan spoke to the UN regarding um, outside species. And of course, I believe biblically and how I explain that in the videos that scripture talks about it. Uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, as well as uh, the Lord's brother Jude spoke about it. Uh, the Lord's brother Jude spoke of the book of Enoch and quoted from it. Um, Ezekiel had experiences with these things. So this, this phenomena is real but can be explained in the scriptures. And so I broke that down for you in Friday night's chat, um, along with interviews. Uh, we discussed um, uh, the Nephilim giants, where they came from and why. Uh, Satan used the Nephilim on the earth, uh, why they were created to begin with. Uh, so we went into the Nephilim, the UFO alien phenomena. We explained all of this based on scriptures and with interviews from credible sources and links. Uh, we, I also discussed uh, papal quotes, uh, blasphemies and heresies that have come down through the centuries, through the dynasty of the papacy. Uh, not only uh, uh, through the dynasty of the papacy, uh, through, for hundreds of years, but also Pope Francis pontificate. Um, I outlined heretical uh, claims that he made that actually are have never been rescinded to this day, either from a previous pope or, or neither has Pope Francis come out and rescinded that he denies the bodily resurrection of Christ or the deity of Christ uh, or that it's dangerous to have a relationship with the Lord. All of these things that he has said, he has never rescinded. And only a pope can rescind something that he he or a former pope has stated or changed those laws. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's interesting how Daniel prophesied that the papal dynasty would one day presume to change times and laws, God's laws, but yet they won't come out and change and rescind what they have stated that's blasphemous about themselves, will they? So they won't touch what they've said, but yet when it comes to God's laws and times, they have no problem trying to change them, do they? So we discussed papal heresy uh, down through the centuries, including Pope Francis pontificate on Friday, uh, quotes from Eugenio Scalfari, the uh, longtime friend of Pope Francis, uh, who is um, noted as quoting Pope Francis, and there are links in Friday night's live chat video. Uh, so we discussed, again, the UFO alien phenomena according to scripture, 
the Nephilim, where do they come from and why? We discussed that. And papal heresy. Uh, today's video, however, I also, so that was just a recap for those of you who missed it. So uh, maybe you might want to check that out when you have time. Uh, I want to go over with you some a couple of news stories that I found here that I thought were of interest uh, concerning um, the Vatican and the papacy. So let's go ahead and bring those up for you really quickly. Um, let me see here. All right, this is coming from Vatican. This is coming from Vatican News. All right, and I'll put a link down up for you in the description section. So I'll show you. This is coming from a Vatican News source that I'm reading to you. And remember, the, uh, did you see the Vatican logo up there that I'm showing you? Remember uh, in Friday night's live chat, I told you that the, the keys in the, uh, the papal crest represent temporal power and heavenly power. Uh, popes have proclaimed down through the centuries that they hold not only temporal power, but heavenly power as well. That's what those two keys represent in the papal crest, which is blasphemous itself. But coming from the Vatican News, uh, uh, .va, which I will put a link down for you in the description section, Philippine Church dedicates 2020 to Dialogue for Human Fraternity. And apparently um, they have a new logo uh, that they're putting out. Um, it says the logo and theme of the Philippine Church's Year of Dialogue uh, for Human Fraternity. And of course, let me show you that. Here's the, um, the logo there that they're using um, for Human Fraternity and Dialogue. So this is all about the ecumenical movement and, uh, you know, at the expense of the truth of the gospel of Christ. Uh, again, as I stated in Friday night's live chat, am I against Human fraternity, am I against people loving their neighbor or treating someone as you would have yourself treated? Of course not. But what I'm against is uh, feeling, following a world system that believes that they can bring this about without Christ. And the papal dynasty down throughout the centuries has been trying to accomplish this with ecumenism, with joining all religions together, making uh, eventually a one world economy, a one world religion, uh, a one world everything, uh, to unite under his banner. Uh, and what Satan's goal is, is to try and create a one world unity and harmony and fraternity without Christ. That's what this new world order is all about in simplicity. Uh, I'm not against people getting along and loving one another. Uh, agreeing to disagree with respect, uh, with intelligent dialogue and treating one another as you would want to be treated. However, this world system, its leaders, and this this uh, mystery Babylon who rides this world system, which is the Vatican City State, is trying to accomplish what only Christ can do, which is to bring about a global harmony and unity without Christ. That's what this is all about, okay? So I wanted to update you on this article that just came out on the Vatican news source here, Philippine Church dedicates 2020 to dialogue for human fraternity. The Catholic Church in the Philippines is celebrating 2020 as a year of ecumenism. So to be called the year of ecumenism and interreligious dialogue and indigenous peoples in the spirit of the Abu Dhabi document on human fraternity. Now remember I was telling you in the month of May, Pope Francis uh, is holding his own ecumenical uh, uh, what would you say, a conference or whatever, in May of 2020 for human fraternity and ecumenism. So the Catholic Church is celebrating 2020 as the year of ecumenism, interreligious dialogue and indigenous peoples in the spirit of the Abu Dhabi document on human fraternity. So I'll put a link down in the description section for you. Um, it states here, the church wants to work for unity and harmony while respecting uh, diversity to recognize people's identities, spiritualities, and ancestral domain. Now, I'm not saying that we aren't to treat people with respect. What I'm saying is, though, you cannot cloak yourself looking like a godly Christian institution and yet incorporate every other pagan religion into it and state that that's okay. Uh, you know, the scripture explicitly states that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. So to incorporate every other pagan and Wiccan religion and say that and, and participate in their ceremonies and allow it on your grounds and yet call it godly? Would Jesus have done this? Jesus left us an example to follow. And again, my challenge to those of you listening, is Jesus lying to you or is he telling you the truth when he said he is the only way? It isn't just Christians who made up this, you know, oh, be born again and, you know, the born againers and, oh, he's the only way. No, Jesus himself stated that. Jesus himself stated you must be born again. Otherwise, you will not 
see or enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness. That's why you don't need Freemasonry. Okay, what, who, who, who is your guide to the light? Freemasonry or Jesus, who is the light? Who's your guide? Choose you this day who you will serve. When Jesus said, I am the way singular, the truth singular, this ecumenical movement is Satan's attempt to undermine that. And the scripture tells us that if we do not hold to the doctrine of Christ, we do not have Christ. And I will look up that scripture for you. So it says here that the church wants to work for unity and harmony, which I understand. However, that will not be accomplished permanently until Christ returns to this world. And the New World Order movement is all about trying to accomplish human fraternity uh, and harmony without Jesus doing it. Okay, so this Vatican News site uh, just made their, their new little logo here, and I'll put a link up for you. Um, you know, stating that uh, it, it's a year, the year 2020 is the year of ecumenism and interreligious dialogue. Okay, so that's what they are deeming it. So let me look up the scripture for you here. Um, if we do not hold to the doctrine of Christ, we do not have Christ. All right. So let's look this up. <clears throat> if I can type today. Okay, we do not have Christ. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, Second John one nine. That's Second John one nine. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Now, I've spoken that to you verbally many times. If you don't hold to the doctrine of Christ, you don't have Christ. But here's scriptural proof. And I'll put this scripture down in the uh, description section as well. Uh, 2 John 1, 9. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ. In other words, if you don't hold to what Jesus said about himself, does not have God. That's what it's saying here. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, that means you stick with it, you're faithful to what Jesus said about himself, has both the Father and the Son. I can't reiterate it enough. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So anyone who comes to you, whether Catholic or Protestant, preaching that always lead to God, is in direct violation of the doctrine of Christ. What was Christ's doctrine that I just told you? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, singular, and the life. I am the singular light of the world. To follow Freemasonry is to depart from the doctrine of Christ because Christ stated, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never be in darkness, but have the light of life. If you're following the Eastern star, if you're a woman, or you're following a paganism or Wicca or the occult practices, uh, or you're uh, into Freemasonry, you're looking for some other source of, for enlightenment, for light. When Jesus stated, I am the light of the world. So if you're departing from the doctrine of Christ and what he said about himself, what does this say about you? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. 2 John 1, 9. He that abides in the doctrine, which means you remain in it, of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. 2 John 1, 9. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. I thought it was extremely important to read you this scripture today. Uh, I wanted to go over with you, like I stated, uh, Friday night's live chat, what we discussed about the UFO alien phenomena, the Nephilim, uh, why they were brought about, what Satan's plan was through the Nephilim, giants, the fallen angels, uh, how this is in scripture, and there's a scriptural answer for this very real phenomena, okay? I wanted to warn you, according to 2 John, that if you are following anything other than the doctrine of Christ, it states implicitly you do not have God. So this ecumenical movement uh, is a lie and a blasphemy from straight out of the pits of hell, okay? Um, for those of you who are new to this channel or just subscribed, I've been uh, showing people a book here um, called 33rd Degrees of Deception, 
Uh, if you have not had a chance to look this up on Amazon, um, it's very inexpensive on Amazon. You can buy it for, I think, eight to ten dollars. It, it's really not that much money at all. Um, this is just one of many sources from a Christian man who came out of Freemasonry and how the Lord uh, led him out. And he lovingly and respectfully presents his point of view in this book. So I highly recommend it for those of you who may have questions about Freemasonry. Maybe you're wanting to get out and don't know how, or maybe you're wanting to join and you have questions about it as a Christian man. Uh, so I highly recommend this gentleman's book here. I'll hold it up a little closer so you can see the title and who the author is. Um, but I highly recommend this book. And what do you have to lose by reading it? I mean, what do you have to lose by giving it a shot and reading it? Absolutely nothing. Okay. So, and I've been reading some question and answer sessions in this book. And believe me, you will go through this book quickly because there's so much, so much here that is riveting that even though it looks like a large book, it, it'll keep you riveted. It, it honestly will. Um, that is not my only source. Um, I have many people contacting me um, in my uh, P.O. box with um, uh, actual testimony of how they left the lodge. And, uh, you know, some have given me permission to read their testimonies on this channel in previous videos and others have asked me to keep it private. Uh, I have, I know ex Freemasons. Um, I've, I have documents, uh, that have been given to me both in my PO box through emails and books that have been given to me from lodges. So I have multiple sources that I'm bringing you these warnings and information from. OK, so it's not like I'm just giving you my opinion to simply bash Freemasonry or bash women that are part of the Eastern Star. All right. So if you haven't had a chance to go back and uh, review Friday night's live chat, um, I hope you get a chance to. But we did discuss papal heresy down throughout the centuries uh, and also in this pontificate with Francis. Um, we discussed uh, the UFO alien fallen angel phenomena, how it is real. And I take you to some books in the Bible where people did experience these things. Um, I, I even gave a testimony in Friday night's live chat of things I have seen that are not man-made, that I have had my own experiences with these, with this phenomena. Um, not often, but I'd say like three times I have. Um, and also I ask for your prayers because I've, I've been asked several times um, by certain people um, if I would uh, collaborate with them uh, on this UFO alien agenda. Um, one of the people that has uh, been respectfully asking me to collaborate with him has, uh, is from a channel called Bruce Sees All. Um, and, uh, you know, his name is Bruce Schwartz, and he does his own research uh, on this uh, UFO alien phenomena. And he's been asking me to collaborate with him and, uh, and do a split screen interview. Um, and uh, so I've agreed to that. So it's just a matter of timing and when we will do that. Um, but I've had people approaching me about discussing this UFO, fallen angelic, uh, interdimensional powers and principalities in the air subject from a Christian worldview. So I appreciate those channels that are reaching out to me um, that are actually wanting the, the, the Christian scriptural viewpoint. And I just want you to know that I thank you for that if you're listening. And I am more than willing to collaborate with you and give you a, uh, the godly point of view. Um, I'm not one of those Christians who believes that this is only science fiction and that this phenomenon is not real and that you're uh, just a conspiracy crazy nut if you believe in the fallen angelic UFO um, phenomena. Um, it is definitely taking place. The powers and principalities of the air are being shaken, as Christ stated, and men's hearts will fail them for fear. And I feel that there is a scriptural answer for this. And so I thank those channels that are reaching out to me and actually wanting to uh, collaborate on the subject with me and respect me enough to allow me to present it from a Christian viewpoint. So I thank you for that. Uh, uh, Bruce Schwartz, I thank you from Bruce Sees All. Um, there's been a couple other channels that have approached me um, asking me for that. So I need to get in touch with them so we can set up some collaboration times. So be looking forward to that. Uh, be looking forward to um, uh, the uh, live chats on Friday evenings. I'm going to do my best to present between an hour and an hour and a half every Friday night of a live chat. Uh, and at least once or twice during the week, maybe a half hour live chat here or there for those who cannot participate in the evenings. Okay. Because I want us all to be able to fellowship. Okay. Um, and that's why I keep putting out those polls to see when it's good for people um, to be able to fellowship. So, um, but God bless you all. Uh, thank you for tuning in and more to come soon. And I'll put links down in the descri uh, description section for you of this 2020 uh, uh, fraternity uh, uh, event that will be taking place.
um, uh, that the Vatican has up on their main website on human fraternity. Like I said, uh, I can't stress it enough. I'm not against human fraternity. I'm not against people loving each other and agreeing to disagree with respect. Okay, I'm not against that. All I'm saying is that this new world order system through these secret societies, okay, like the uh, Freemasons, the Skull and Bones, um, the occult systems, the Illuminati, the elites, they're all trying to bring about a globalization of the world apart from Christ. And that's the simplest way that I know to put it. And it was prophesied that it would take place in the end times. Um, so, you know, uh, please be in prayer for me as I continue to seek the Lord in presenting this information. Um, thank you all also for praying for my father. Uh, I, I put his picture up in the description section. I'm sorry, in the community section of the video uh, of the channel so that you can see who you're praying for. Sometimes putting a face to a name or a prayer request helps. Uh, thank you for praying for my father. Uh, he, uh, he and my mother were married from the time they were 19 years old, and they spent 51 years of their lives together. So it's, uh, you know, and as a matter of fact, I had kind of a hard weekend this past weekend thinking about my mother. So um, I thank you all for praying for me emotionally, and uh, I wanted to put my father's picture up there in the community section to put a face with the name and the prayer request. So thank you all so much for responding and for praying. Uh, more to come soon. Uh, God bless you, and uh, please keep tuning in for uh, the uh, the collaborations that I'm looking to do, Lord willing, with people and setting and scheduling these things up. You can look forward to that and more live chats. So God bless you, and please open up the description section for the links that I presented you on this human fraternity document that's just been released by the Vatican. Uh, God bless, guys. Take care, and more to come soon.